Good evening, and welcome to the St. Petersburg by Night Podcasting Network. Tonight, we present to you our Werewolf the Apocalypse Chronicle, Rage Across Tampa. Welcome back to the St. Pete by Night Twitch channel where we play St. Petersburg by Night, a massive multiplayer 5th edition game set in the world of darkness in St. Petersburg, Florida. By the world of darkness, we mean Vampire the Masquerade. We mean Hunter the Reckoning. But for tonight, here on Rage Across Tampa, we mean Werewolf the Apocalypse. My name is Kent, also known as Misha Kent on all social media. I am the lead storyteller of St. Pete by Night and very, very proud to be the storyteller of Rage Across Tampa. We've missed you. We had to take uh, two weeks off for the holidays and the new year. Our pack being trapped in the Umbra the entire time, about to face off against the starving remnant of a former guru that had some personal significance to someone that they left back on the material plane. But we'll be getting into that in just a moment. While you've got a second, go check out all these social media links down below and go follow St. Pete by Night on all social media so that you can keep up to date on all the amazing happenings happening in the world of St. Petersburg by Night. But I couldn't do this by myself. Let's go ahead and introduce the amazing, amazing players that make this game possible. Players, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hey everybody, my name is Preston. I play Aiden Goodspeed, the Arun from the Gale Stalkers. Hi everybody, I'm Champ, Champagne, a uh, handsome feller, whatever you want to call me, and I will be playing Aspen Weiss, the Philodox of the Silver Fangs. Hello everybody, I am Nori, and I will be playing Malicious Jester, the Galliard of the Black Furies. Hi everyone, I'm Simon. I'll be playing Joseph Ash Speaker, the Theurge from the Ghost Council. So last time we were all together, the pack ventured into the Umbra, into the unknown, into the world owned and maintained and manipulated by the spirits. The pack was tested, each by their own spirit of sorts, a representative of their patron who challenged them to prove themselves and to gain the approval of that spirit in order to gain the assistance of Luna herself, or at least in her representative, Star, who was a Luna-based messenger spirit that they met at the base of a tree. Having succeeded, for the most part, in getting the blessing of their patron spirits, 
they were sent to Amelie Arena, or at least the projection of it, within the Umbra. There they ventured in, seeing the spirits of the weaver, hard at work, phase spiders moving about, patching up holes and making sure that all is well and constructed within the city as it should be. But the manifestation of the worm was ever present because the worm and the weaver, while not necessarily two of the same side, often can be found working in harmony as one cannot exist without the other. Entering the arena... Along with Regina, the spider spirit that possesses Artie's jeep, they found their way down to center ice, which was a much more unstable surface than could be found on the prime material plane. Less ice, but more a sheer coating covering depths and possibly doom beneath. They plunged into the water, or at least some of them did, the ice almost freezing over the top of them instantly, and... Through Aiden and Joseph and Jester's help, they were able to free Artie and Aspen from the cold and frigid depths. There they saw for themselves what happened, where the Tear of Gaia could be found, as a large spire was found thrust through the fallen body of a guru in Krinos form. Upon further examination, they came to find that the guru the one that had fallen was, in fact, Eliza's protege, who had gone into the Umbra seeking some sort of solution, some sort of last-ditch hope over a decade before this pack found their way into the Umbra. As they approached, reverently, they removed the body of the protege from the spire and attempted to give him last rites and to take a familiar talisman from around his neck to return to Eliza. But not as all as it seems in the Umbra. What is dead doesn't always stay dead. It just nearly rots into another form. And as they reached for the talisman, the being, now known as a starving remnant, the imprint left behind one who stays in the Umbra far too long, a fate that could very well be in the future of this particular pack, should they linger too long, sprung to life or some sort of existence as it grasped the hand of Joseph, I believe, who reached to remove the talisman. So for tonight's session, we begin in combat. Pack. The remnant has a hold of Joseph's wrist. Declare your intentions. Aiden, we'll start with you. Yeah. Going to try and uh, go into Krynos, going to do the rage checks. Let's see if I can do that. Now, after last session, Having turned into Krynos just previously to free them from the ice before shifting back, you dropped down to a rage of one. So in yep. order to make this shift, you will have to make two successful rage checks. If even one of them fails, you will be completely out of rage and therefore will lose the wolf and your ability to shift or access any gifts, rights, or powers until you regain rage. Okay, so go ahead and make your two rage checks. That's one success. And one success. Okay, so having successfully made the transition, you begin to change, growing larger, the fur breaking out across your arms, your muscles becoming fuller and thicker and sinewy. Veins breaking out under the skin as the rage takes hold and you unleash the beast within, growing several, several inches taller and taking an almost feral and bestial form. If you decide to act during this transition process, you will be at a negative. Do you wish to do anything? 
yeah, he's going to, um, Aiden's going to rush over as the transformation is happening to try and pull the hand that's gripping Joseph to remove it from his hand. Okay. Aspen, what is your intention? Uh, Aspen, not being great in these situations, uh, takes a step back, kind of grabs Artie because they were sitting, kind of warming themselves up. Um, grabs Artie, looks at him, looks over, and just kind of freezes. Okay. Jester, declare your intention. Jester will also shift into Krynos form and... And you had two rage. rage, so you have the potential to fail once, but if you fail both, you will also lose the wolf and therefore be unable to change. Right. That's one success. Two successes. So in a similar fashion to Aiden, you begin to shift, growing larger, stronger, more powerful, the epitome of the form of the guru the most powerful form that they can take but also without careful watch the most uncontrollable form that they can take the most destructive and sometimes the most tragic form they can take with the bodysuit that was provided to you by regina the clothes don't rip but instead almost fade and sink into the skin the various fibers of the web she weaved kind of forming with your body as you make the shift. Again, the muscles springing out, the fur covering your form from head to toe, your muzzle elongating and the teeth growing almost razor sharp and saliva dripping from the fangs, ready for the combat that's about to take place. Is there anything else you wish to do, knowing that you'll be at a negative as this transition does take a toll upon the body? Uh, yes, actually there is. I will let out a howl that sounds more like a song, and I will activate Song of Rage. Okay, go ahead and describe what Song of Rage does. So, Song of Rage, I... Singing, this one in the voice of the wolf, will sing out of the past grievances of the past few weeks and I get to roll or make a test and a gift test and if successful everyone within share shot will gain a point of rage two points if it's a critical win okay so this could be very very beneficial to those that have dropped in rage and potentially maintaining their beast or at least using their gifts in the Krynos form what is Jester channeling into this song personally? We can talk about the mechanics, we can talk about the grievances of the past few weeks, but what grievances specifically are weighing upon Jester as she makes this call out to her companions? My friends who are fighting against a great evil on Gaia are now captured by those same that same evil and they're captured in a way that i don't know how to fight against so i am angry at that i am angry at writer so angry at writer for just not caring about the consequences of what he did and how it fell back on me basically he screwed me so taking all of your resentment for Ryder, taking all of your grief, your anger, and potentially a little bit of fear for your allies back home who face an evil that they don't fully understand, as they don't face off against just your mere corrupt mortals. They don't face off against power-hungry lawyers. They face off against undead beasts servants of the worm, representatives of corruption. You put all of this fury into your throat like a roiling lava coming out of a volcano before spewing forth this howl. Go ahead and make your gift test. Okay. I'll be rolling charisma and glory. 
minus two. I also made my rage check for this because it does cost a rage check. Three successes. No crit. So. Well, that that roiling emotion that brews with inside you is successful as the call rings out, echoing off of the stands, off of the walls, off of the borders that make up the Amelie Arena almost in a cacophonous sound that seems to echo all throughout. Everyone feels the rage build inside of them. Everyone may take one point of rage as the test is successful. Joseph, what are your intentions? Uh, I'm going to try and scramble away and break free from the uh, undead Garu thing. Okay. Uh, are you going to stay in your current form? Are you going to make any changes? This is a very powerful um, beast. You can feel the fingers are almost like a vice grip around, and you can feel these almost disgustingly long talons starting to bury themselves into your flesh. Yeah, I'll... I'll probably go... Krynos. Yeah, I should go Krynos first. Okay, so go ahead and make your two rage checks. Now, if I recall, okay. you had two rage. You had not extended. I had one. Oh, you had one. But now you have two. Okay. Okay. Okay, I lost one rage. So you lost one rage, dropping you down to one. But that does not stop the transition, despite the failure you do have one rage remaining, which allows you to maintain the Krynos form, at least for now, as you shift, growing larger and stronger. You can feel the vice-like grip of the starving remnant start to separate as your wrist grows in its very hand, but it still manages to keep a kind of vice lock on your wrist. To break the grasp you can go ahead and try and make a strength and brawl check to try and break the grapple but it will be at a negative two because of the transition however since aiden is attempting to assist in taking his hand off i will either allow you to make aid in the roll with a one dice bonus or for you to make the roll with a one dice bonus i i, I would elect for aiden to make the roll with oh, assist for me. Okay, Aiden, so you can go ahead and make a strength and brawl check. However, you are at a negative two dice penalty, but you will gain one of those dice back because Joseph is also trying to rent his hand free. Yep. Five successes. Okay. I will make the remnants attempt to resist. Okay. They only got four successes, so five successes is enough to rend wrench their hand free to break it off of Joseph's arm, allowing Joseph to kind of back up in his still evolving Krynos form to get some space between him and the remnant. Aspen already kind of looks over at you with a slightly startled and bewildered gaze, almost kind of frozen slightly himself, as he is often the one in the van, not the one in the action. He too seems to be processing, but as you're kind of looking to him for insight or for some kind of guidance, go ahead and roll me a wits and insight check. Three. Three successes. So as you're looking, on the surface, 
Artie kind of has a look of shock and bewilderment and kind of appears lost, but something in his eyes is calculating, is quickly running through various kind of ideas. You can see him kind of scrambling in his mind to put together almost like a supercomputer trying to put together some sort of solution or some sort of way that the two of you who are not known for your combat prowess can help. You can see him calculating at his eyes, almost darting around, taking an assessment of the surroundings that you're currently finding yourself in. The Remnant, having had his purchase taken from him, is going to activate two gifts and spring into action. The first gift that he is going to activate is Raging Strike, which allows him to add his... Uh, to gain bonus dice equal to their glory on a single brawl attack. But on top of that... He's also going to activate, uh, let me get the name of it just so I can be sure, Spirit of the Fray, which allows him to act, attack several individual targets or additional targets with his one attack. So he is going to attack Jester, Aiden, and Joseph with a single attack. Uh, Jester and Joseph, I'll allow you to make uh, Dexterity and Athletics or Strength and Brawl to try and defend yourselves. Aiden, I'm going to use your five successes from the Breaking of the Grapple as your target. You said strength and what? Uh, strength and brawl. Okay. If you're trying to like block and fend him off. But you are all set your negative twos. Don't forget that because you are still transitioning. Five successes. Okay. Five successes. So five successes across the board. The Remnant got seven successes. So everybody takes... This is going to be a claw attack. So... Everybody takes two superficial damage. And that is not halved because he did critical on it. So it is... Two superficial straight to each of you. I would like to uh, activate Porcupine's Reprisal because it's a free action where uh, damage sustained in close combat um, will rebound against the assailant. So okay. the place where he hits, the hair will spike up and shoot out at him. Uh, well, I need to make a rage check which is good. And then upon receiving damage from brawl or melee attack, the user can make a rage check to immediately deal superficial damage equal to their glory on the attacker. Okay. My glory is a two. Okay. So you can take two superficial back. All right. So as Aiden manages to wrench Joseph free, the remnant lets out a roar and then just with his other claw swings around almost in a, lightning fashion to hit both joseph jester before rounding and smashing into aiden with his claws raking across breaking his grasp free of aiden before squaring off with the three of you next round declare your intentions aiden we'll start with you again yeah uh going to use my razor claws 
Uh, same thing. This gift is a free instant, uh, int instantaneous action while in the Krynos form. The claws become elongated and hardened. I get to add my glory, or half of the glory rounding up. I have one, so the one additional for the damage. Okay. So you will make your strength and brawl check. Uh, Aspen, what is your intention? Uh, well, seeing all of that happen, uh, she is going to, she's also going to take a look around to see if there's any, like, seeing what, what Artie's doing, she's also going to just kind of take in the whole scene and see if there's absolutely anything that she can use or do to help them without being in the combat. Okay, go ahead and roll me a wits and awareness. Okay. Jester, what is your intention? I think I'm going to go around to the back of him and attempt to attack his legs to try to take them out. So you're going to try to flank. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the roll is still the same, strength and brawl. Uh, so you will make a strength and brawl check against him. Joseph, your intention. I'm in the fight. I'm going to hit him. Okay. Strength and brawl as well. Aspen, what did you get on your wits and awareness? One success. So at first, as you're desperately, frantically kind of looking around for any kind of advantage to gain on this particular battleground, you're looking into the bleachers, you're looking over the stands, you're looking over the surface of the ice, and you can see that the ice has begun to start cracking again. Uh, it seems to be starting on the exterior and moving its way inward. However, that's not the only thing you see, as you can see little black shadows kind of starting to hop over the various seats in the stands moving their way downward to the ice as these little kind of jaggling-esque creatures that almost look like little gargoyles in their own right start rushing towards the ice okay so Aiden, Jester, and Joseph, the Remnant is going to use the same action to strike all of you at the same time, but go ahead and give me your results, as this is a contested roll. Okay. With a crit for me. Joseph, what did you get? Five. Five. Okay. And then, Jester, you said you got seven? Okay. Well, it scored seven successes again. So as it kind of rakes out, breaking through Aiden's kind of attack, breaking through Joseph's attack, it does come to blows with Jester, and Jester manages to get a slightly upper hand on this one causing a slice across the kind of shadowy but decaying form of the remnant, allowing to let out a bestial scream. Uh, Aiden, you will take two superficial damage. Joseph, how many did you get again? Five? So you will take one superficial damage. As the halving does work, as it did not critical on this particular attack. Artie looks to you, Aspen, kind of surveying the scene. This isn't going to last for long. They need the moon. Come on. And he turns towards the stands and kind of as he runs towards the bleachers, shifts into a lupus form and drops to all fours, becoming that of the mangy city dog, the fashion he usually takes as he drops and starts running off of the ice heading towards the bleachers in a straight shot towards one of the exit ways, leaving the arena. What would you like to do? She is going to see everything happening, uh, everybody getting kind of hurt, these like weird little creatures, and she's going to hesitate for just a second, and then she's going to run after him, and she will also shift into her lupus form. 
<laughs> okay, so <clears throat> players, um, I believe as this around has passed and nothing has been killed, everybody has to take a point of willpower damage to maintain their Krynos form going forward. Oh, I decided I'm just going to frenzy. I'm mad enough that I'm just going to frenzy. Okay. So going into a frenzy, that pops your rage to five, but you are now completely succumb to the rage inside and the anger of the Krynos form, where it's, you know your target for now, but whether you'll be able to maintain focus on that target beyond this will be determined by the next several rounds. Players, the ice has begun to crack. You can feel it shifting beneath your feet as the coating surface layer of the ice starts to give way. Aiden, Jester, and Joseph, I need you to all make dexterity and athletics checks to maintain your footing and find a stable position. Aspen, you do manage to clear and get off of the ice following behind Artie as he rushes up into the stands, out into kind of the main thoroughfare that encircles the arena outside. Eight in five successes, you manage to keep your footing for this round. Joseph and Jester, you also manage to maintain your footing, but you can tell that it's only going to get more difficult as more of the ice gives way under the force of your massive hulking forms, because you do gain a lot of weight in Krynos form, as well as this ensuing conflict that seems to be happening next round players go ahead and declare your intentions starting with aiden the ice itself that's breaking is it just like small little holes that are emerging right now are they like large chunks that are large breaking? cracks are starting to form and it seems like as you go ahead and roll me a wits and awareness to kind of see towards the exterior what's happening to the ice overall. Three successes. Okay, so from what you can tell, the, the cracks are large enough that it could start giving way into what appears to be almost like uh, floating kind of islands of ice throughout the water itself that there will be big gaps forming. In fact, you can see some of the chunks of ice starting to sink below the surface as the entire the entirety of the surface seems to be losing its structural integri integrity. Okay. Uh, with that three, is there a spot behind this guru where if I'd be able to push them into the, the water below? At the moment, it doesn't appear so, but potentially with enough force... You could essentially drive them back, and if they hit the surface of the ice hard enough, it might give way to send them under, but it's also very likely you would go under as well, if that were the case. However, with your three successes as well, you can see these tiny little gargoyle-esque figures climbing over the railings and the boards surrounding the ice's surface, kind of leaping onto it, and they seem to be agile little creatures capable of leaping a great distance. So, go ahead and declare your intention. Going to uh, attempt to lift this guru up and slam them down into the ice. Okay, so that'll be a strength and brawl. Aspen, as you reach the main thoroughfare, you can see Artie is kind of charging towards one of the plexiglass windows that seems to be encircling the arena and as he does so you can see him shifting into a slightly larger version of this mangy, mangy dog giving up some of his speed for a little bit more strength as he prepares to go smashing through the glass itself she but will she, she will um let him break through the glass and just follow behind staying in her lupus. Okay. Uh, Jester, go ahead and declare your intention. So uh, seeing Aiden, because I'm seeing like Aiden lift him up and realizing that she will pause for just a second and then slam into um, the wolf when it hits the ground. 
like when okay. it hits the ice. So you want to kind of almost in a combination try to help pile drive him into the ground. Yeah. Okay. Joseph, uh, go ahead and make a strength and brawl check. Joseph. I want to try and grab the spire of ice and run. Okay. Yank it out of the ice and go. Okay, then go ahead and make me a strength and athletics chest as you're going to try and wrench this kind of spire free from the ice's surface to grab it and start running. Okay, so a lot of things happening at once. So strength and athletics for you, Joseph. Strength and brawl for Aiden and Jester. Aspen, you're kind of holding your action to see if Artie is successful in breaking through the glass surrounding the arena. So this particular remnant is not going to go quietly. It is going to try and stop Aiden from grappling him by shoving his claws directly into Aiden's chest while also whipping around and trying to grab Jester as well. Spend a willpower. Okay. So, Jester, you got four. Aiden, how many did you get? Nine with a crit. Nine with a crit. Okay. So, you lift up the remnant into the air, getting a good hold of it. It does not seem to have enough strength to break kind of your grab on it. And as you smash it into the ground, the ice gives way. Jester, however, as you go to slam your fists into it, it grabs onto your wrists and pulls you down with it into the the freezing water beneath the ice as the ice just immediately gives way, plunging down into the depths. At this point, several of the shadowy jagglings are going to attack as well. So, Aiden and Joseph, I need you to make dexterity and athletics checks at a minus one against the jagglings as they are attempting to intercept. Okay. One. Three. Okay. What did you get on your strength and athletics there, Joseph? Uh, six with a crit. Okay, six with a crit. So you do manage to grab onto and start pulling on the spire, and you can hear the cracking of the base of the spire as it starts to give way under your grasp, perhaps assisted by the surface becoming less stable. You manage to wrench it free just in time for one of these jagglings to kind of jump up onto you and start ripping and clawing at your furry muscular form, tearing away some of the flesh and doing two points of superficial already halved to you. Aiden, you are a lot less comfortable as you have driven the remnant into the water below, taking Jester with him. Two of these jagglings kind of launch onto you and start tearing away as well, but you are going to take Four points of superficial damage already halved as they do so. Aspen. Artie throws his entire weight now in a much grander form against the glass, sending a shower of glass shards out into the concrete stairs beyond the exterior of the arena. His weight takes him so much so that he almost topples and rolls on the ground slightly with the smashed glass. And you can see some of the tiny glass shards embedded in his form as he kind of shakes himself off and gets back to his feet. Go ahead and roll me a wits and awareness as you get outside of the exterior of the arena. Okay. So it takes a moment for you to orient yourself with the sound of the kind of crinkling glass hitting the surface as well as your concern for Artie with now what appears to be little droplets of blood forming around several glass shards that seem to be embedded in his frame. But you can kind of see as you look over 
that you are on what appears to be an upper deck, like a mezzanine or almost an outdoor kind of porch area that possibly is near a bar or another place where people go out for smokes during games or concerts. And your eye seems to manage to catch what looks to be a wrought iron ladder that seems to be going up the side of the building to the roof. Go ahead and declare your intention. We're going to um, separate the two groups as we have two, well, three kind of massive events happening at the same time. We'll start with Aspen, then we'll go to Aiden and Joseph, then we'll go to Jester in the water. Okay, uh, Aspen seeing the um, the ladder and listening to Artie's words, she's going to switch into Glabro. Okay. And she will climb up, start climbing up the stairs. So go ahead and make me the rage check for the switch into Glabro. You successfully change shifting out of the lupus form and beginning to take a more muscular kind of powerful form, standing back up on your two feet. You head towards the the ladder that's leading upwards. I won't admit require you to make a check it's not too hard to do as you powerfully start scampering up the ladder but the ladder is going to go up about two potentially three stories before it reaches the roof but you manage to leap over the security gate around the ladder meant to keep fans and other kind of event goers out as you reach the ladder and start kind of going hand over hand almost instinctually up the ladder climbing up the side of the building Joseph and Aiden, Joseph, you've got your arms wrapped around this massive spire, but you've got these jagglings that are ripping and rending at your flesh. Aiden, you've got two of them kind of climbing over your form, attempting to tear away at your form. Since our Krinos werewolves did not kill anything last round, we again take another superficial willpower damage to maintain the form. What are your intentions, Aiden and Joseph? Attacking um, two enemies at once with them being on me, would that still a possibility to be able to rip one off and another? It is, but you will have to split your pool right. to do so. Okay. So you will have to decide how many dice to dedicate to one and how many dice to dedicate to another. Okay. I'll split my pool completely in half. We'll do four for one, four for another. Okay, so you want to t kind of grab one and try to throw it off, and the other you want to just try and rake at or what is uh try and that one's going to try and hold hold out and then um but definitely get at least one off of him and the other one's going to try and grab kind of around the throat and just get it off of him okay so go ahead and give me strength and brawl checks for both of them joseph what's your intention if you attempt to do anything to shake this jaggling you will have to drop the spire in order to do so Is the spire heavy enough that I don't think I could carry it in Hamid form? Oh, definitely. Unless you are particularly strong, and by particularly strong, I mean a four strength, it will be a heavy effort to try and drag across the ice, especially since you can feel the ice giving way, even at this moment, beneath you. I want to... So when, when our bars are filled up with superficial, we're considered, what's the word? Impaired. Um, impaired, and that's a dice penalty? That is a dice penalty, yeah. That's a negative two dice penalty to any physical checks in the case of your health bar being fully impaired, or any mental checks in, in regards to your willpower, mental or social. Um, I'm going to drop to Glavro and try to... Uh, keep running. Okay, Maybe. so with dropping into Glabro form, you will lose your four additional health boxes that you gained from Krinos form. So if any health has transitioned into Krinos form, that adds to your health bar. Okay, so you want to keep running even with this jaggling kind of tearing at you. Um, yeah, because I, I can't 
I can't really drop the tier on the water. We'll lose it. So I want to get off the water before I fight. Okay, so go ahead and give me a strength in athletics as you're trying to kind of pull this large spire with you, but you're also combating against the Jaggling who is going to roll to attack you simultaneously. Aiden, you also will split your pool while both attempt to attack you. All right, so to resolve Aiden first, how many successes did you get on each roll? Four for each. Four for each, okay. So you tied with them. So no damage is exchanged, but you are also unable to rend them off of you. They seem to be latched on pretty good, and you can see these kind of twisted, snarling, almost like gargoyle-esque faces kind of rasping and hissing at you. These fangs elongating as they look like they're preparing to bite into you. Joseph. Strength and athletics. I got three successes. Three successes. Okay. So as you attempt to kind of rush off the ice carrying the spire, the jaggling on your back kind of scrambles down towards your feet and starts ripping at the flesh on the back of your legs. You are going to go ahead and take a point of superficial damage, and I need you to make a dexterity and athletics to try and keep your footing and not drop to the ground as it kind of hamstrings you from behind. Okay, two successes. Unfortunately, that's not going to be quite enough to do it. As the hamstringing kind of catches you off guard, you feel one of your legs go almost limp and weak as the flesh in the back of the leg is ripped open, causing you to tumble forward and drop to the ground, the spire leaving your grasp and going spiraling a few feet away in front of you. Jester. You have plunged into the frigid, cold waters beneath the ice's surface. However, that does not concern you one bit. Your only goal, the only thing in your mind at this exact moment, is to destroy this creature in front of you, beneath you in the water. First, I'd like you to go ahead and make a stamina and composure check as the shock of the cold, chilled water hits you. Or stamina and resolve. I'll let you choose. Okay. And don't forget you're at rage five, so you have five rage dice in your pool. Right. Oh, hey. Um, this isn't going to be good. Uh, that's a brutal outcome. A brutal or, outcome. Yeah, I got the brutal, two brutal results. The brutal results. Okay, so how many total successes? Uh, three. Three total successes. Okay. You take one point of aggravated health damage as the cold of the water almost freezing to your skin causes almost a slight form of hypothermia to take hold, it being so frigid against you. But go ahead and make a strength and brawl check as you are going to try and break free or at least attack this thing that's holding you as you submerge into the deep. I'm going for the throat. Okay. Is that your intention is a called shot? Because if that's the case, you will take a negative two successes to your attack. Yeah, I will. Okay. It's a called shot. Um, okay. I'm also regenerating. Okay. Uh, if I have one aggravated, okay. If I have one aggravated before the two superficial, can I still heal the superficial? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be doing that. Oh, I made my rage check, so I do not lose rage. And take that 
off a minute. Also, uh, Joseph, I meant to mention, as soon as you shifted out of Kranos, you dropped down to one rage. No change. We're good. Eight successes. Eight successes, okay. With a crit. With a crit. Well, again, it's not going to go quietly and take that, so it is going to attempt to fight back as well. Okay. So it also got a brutal result of four successes, five, six, seven, eight... 9, 10, 11 successes. So, with the brutal result, considering all of those successes as well, you are going to take two additional and all aggravated damage as it is tearing and rending and pulling you down deep into the water. It's seemingly unfazed. You don't even see what appear to be air bubbles coming out of its mouth as it sinks. Okay. So, Aspen, you've reached the top of the ladder. You find yourself atop the roof of the Amelie Arena. You can see the large spidery limbs of the spires of the city kind of surrounding off the river, off the coast, further within the city, the large hulking body above this kind of misty cloud work kind of can be heard groaning and creaking as it moves even louder now than it was when you were staring at it from far away give me a wits and awareness again as you try to kind of approximate where your group would be beneath your feet two successes so kind of trying to guess where the center of the arena is. You can hear Artie kind of kind of climbing up the ladder behind you saying, we have to break the roof in. They need the moon. You can do this. But also you hear several kind of chittering noises as these black spidery kind of gargoyle-esque figures come over the walls around the side of the building and seem to be coming towards Artie, preparing to leap onto him. She'll just yell to Artie, um, behind you! And, and she kind of, like, stumbles towards the area where um, her friends are below. Okay. Speaking of below, we transition to down on the ice. Once again, the ice has continued to give way. As Jester is already in said ice, Aiden and Joseph go ahead and make another dexterity and athletics check. Joseph, I'd like you to do so as a minus one as you are down prone right now, having been kind of caught up by the jaggling that has clawed at your feet. Zero successes. Okay. Aiden, you are managed, you do manage to, to kind of keep your feet and stay on your back two legs as Joseph reaching kind of for the spire, trying to clamber. You feel the ice beneath you give way and you go plunging into the water itself. Go ahead and roll a stamina and resolve or composure as the cold water hits you. Two successes. Okay. Um, 
go ahead and to take two points of superficial damage as the icy kind of chill causes your muscles to tense up and freeze kind of suddenly. It's such a shock to your system that you can feel yourself kind of giving in a little bit. Okay, there's a problem with that. Okay. Uh, that's me full of ag. That's you full of ag. So you will fall unconscious as you drop and start to descend into the water beneath the surface of the ice. Aiden, what is your intention? Aiden's still focused on the creatures crawling all over him. Okay. Uh, and trying to maintain balance on the breaking ice, so he is going to once again try and get these things off of him. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a strength and brawl. Separate the pool. You've got two adversaries on you. I'm going um I'm gonna do a five and three. So five for the first one and three for the others. That is four for the first one. Two for the second. Okay. So you'll take a total of three superficial damage as they got eight or seven successes on their attacks separately. So you get one from one and three from the other as they continue kind of raking into your form, latched onto you. One of them even bites down into you, sinking these tiny needle like fangs into your form. Jester, you're plunging into the deep, the cold water and the dark starting to surround you, the only light seeming to be from above. You have two options. One, you could take a point of willpower damage to end your rage and try to head back towards the surface, or you could continue to kind of follow this creature down into the dark, attempting to rend it, but you know you can feel that burning in your chest that the breath is leaving your body and it won't be much longer. Yes, I think the point of the urgency of breath will break that and I'll spend a point of willpower to try and head to the surface. Okay, so go ahead and make a strength and athletics to try and pull yourself back up to the surface, trying to seek out that light above versus the glooming dark that seems to be the abyss below. He's probably going to try to still grab for me. So can I uh, change it to a strength and brawl if I kick off of him? Sure. Okay. Eight successes with a crit he only got six so you managed to use one of your back feet to shove off of his head and push yourself upwards to the surface and the light speeds towards you using all of the force of your crinos form to give you as much kind of lift as you can you eventually crest the water taking in a deep but almost painful breath of air as you find yourself locking on with your claws on either side onto a piece of ice, starting to pull yourself out of the deeps of the water. The remnant has disappeared beneath the surface, but to unknown where it has gone since. But you find yourself back up at the surface of the water, kind of clambering and trying to climb your way out. Next round, Aspen. You're on the roof. You can hear the chittering, kind of hissing, screaming 
and this almost guttural roar coming from down the ladder over the side of the building. What would you like to do? It, is the ladder far away? Could I, like, see him? Like, if you're see... moving towards the center of the building, no. But if you are staying near the edge and abandoning your purpose, then yes. She'll she'll keep running to the center. Is there any like glass windows or anything on the roof, or is it all just covered? It's all concrete. Okay, yeah, she'll just run to the center. Okay, so go ahead and give me a wits and insight. Strangely enough, as you're trying to intuit, you you got your general direction the last round, but now you're trying to get to what you think to be the center of the rooftop now. The dark of kind of the surrounding area makes it a little bit more difficult to see, but you're trying to guesstimate based off of what you believe the size of the building to be. Two. Two successes. Okay. You reach a point that you believe to be kind of approximately dead center of the rooftop. What would you like to do? She will pause for a moment, think to to Aiden and form and what he's taught her, and she'll just start punching at the at the roof, seeing what she can do. Okay, go ahead and give me a strength and brawl in your glabro form as you try to start pounding on the surface of the roof with all the strength that you have. Two. Two successes. So as you pound your fist against the concrete as hard as you can, you you try with all of the strength you have in your current form to try and puncture the concrete, but it's just too strong. As you beat against it, you can feel your fists almost starting to grow bloody on the scraping of the concrete rooftop, which isn't as smoothed out and as refined as a walkway would be. This is kind of brittle concrete work, or not brittle, but kind of like jagged concrete work on the top of the roof. Go ahead and take a point of superficial damage as your fists are kind of starting to bloody themselves on the rooftop. Down on the surface of the ice, we're going to transition to Aiden and Jester. Aiden, as you're trying to kind of wrench these things free, you see Jester emerge from the surface of the ice, still in her crinos form. Both of you take a superficial willpower damage as you are trying to maintain your forms. Actually, just coming out of rage, or coming out of your frenzy, you would lose your Krynos form, which would drop you down to one rage and back right. into your Hamid form. Yeah. Declare your intentions. At this point, uh, Aiden... Just gonna focus on one of them as trying to get just two isn't working so he's gonna grab one and instead of just throwing it off he's gonna try um, be a called shot he's gonna grab around it using his um where is it yeah the raging strike and going to squeeze down on the neck of it and try and rip okay. the neck off of it so you are actually going for the neck specifically or you're just trying to grab it now it is a I tiny probably... like two and a half foot, three foot tall thing. Um, yeah. So you could just grab the whole body of it, but if you want to go for the neck specifically, you'll be at a negative two. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to kill it at this point. So he's going to go for whatever kill he can. If that's just grabbing and squeezing, awesome. Okay. I'm assuming strength and brawl. Strength and brawl, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jester, what's your intention? Can I see Joseph? Uh, go ahead and roll me a wits and awareness check. Okay. Three successes. Three successes. Okay. 
With three successes, you don't see Joseph specifically, but you can see the spire kind of sitting on the surface of the ice in what looks to be a caved-in section of the rink itself. Just open water at that point. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to swim in that direction. I'm looking for Joseph. Okay, so go ahead and give me a strength and athletics. Uh, I won't make you make the stamina check as you are trying to, like you are in the water and you're as accumulated to it as you can be in the few moments that have passed. It's warm now. I'm pretty sure my blood's warming it up. Yep. Uh, three successes. Three successes, okay. So you start kind of swimming around the large chunks of ice trying to make your way over towards where the kind of divot, the hole in the ice is. Uh, and as you reach the surface, you can go ahead and roll me a wits and investigation as you're looking for any sign of Joseph. One success. One success. Well, luckily, it's not a very high bar. There is blood that seems to be kind of on the edge of some of the ice dropping into the water, and you can kind of see pools of it starting to float up towards the top as he sinks lower and lower into the water. Okay. I might regret this later, but uh, I am switching to Glabro form. Go ahead and make the rage check. Yes. You are successful. So as you grow a little bit more muscular, still in a maintaining a more human shape, but a rather large hulking human, uh, you do manage to successfully transition, which makes the water a little less frigid, a little less piercing. What is your intention? My intention is to go to find Joseph. So you want to try and dive down beneath the surface of the water to find Joseph. Okay. Yeah. Aspen. Atop the rooftop, as you pound on it as hard as you can, the sound of the hissing and kind of snarling gets louder as you kind of look in the direction of the ladder. You can see now what appears to be a kind of sandy, blonde, hulking, crinosform wolf kind of tearing at these jagglings that seem to be crawling up the side of it. But it kind of snarls and looks over at you, giving you a very kind of intent look. Go ahead and roll me a wits and insight. Two. Three words are all you can get from the stare of Artie as he fights off these jagglings. That's not enough. You know. Hearing it, she will um, she's going to try and find um, specifically like a weak point, if she can find a weak point using hopefully intelligence and something um, to try and find a weak point and try and hit it again. I'll give you an intelligence and insight check. Four. Okay. Four successes. As you kind of study the rooftop, you can tell the further away from the supports is where you're going to find the weakest points in any given roof. You need to have pillars at even distributed points, especially the larger the roof is. As you kind of study the make of the roof, you can kind of tell where the supports down below that enter in the arena are. Whether there's a bulge or a cap on top of the supports holding the roof up, there seems to be some sort of stabilizing structure, almost like a square brick that pops out of the roof itself, holding it up. Based off of your positioning, you think that if you move just a little bit more, you'll get to kind of an even distance from these support posts till you find a good central spot that you would be able to crack through. But based off of your bloody knuckles, you know, even with without a jackhammer, you're probably not going to be able to pierce this right now.
Joseph, give me a random memory. A memory from Joseph's life that is significant. One that feels hopeful or one that feels important. What is one of the memories that would flash through Joseph's mind if he was watching his life flash before his eyes? Given the current situation, um, the first time he passed his swim test at summer camp and pushing through, he did a lot of hiking, but didn't really get a chance to go to the pool a lot. So when he was still a scout getting through his swim test and, and, you know, passing that and being able to make the next rank would be what's probably going through his mind right now being so, in the water. So most of these swim tests usually take place in a controlled environment, like a public pool or a YMCA. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, probably if he's at camp, it would have been like in a lake, in a lake? but had, he had to jump in off the dock and, you know, murky water with fish poking at him, that kind of a thing. Okay. So you can feel the kind of, Stiff surface of a damp, kind of wooden dock beneath your feet. You can hear the sound, the distant fading sounds of children's laughter and splashing nearby. As you find yourself in your little swim trunks on the edge of a dock, kind of looking down into this, this watery surface that, at the time, wasn't as deep logically as it probably felt as you were preparing to jump in for the first time right now it seems like it could be an endless void beneath your feet unable to see the bottom but you can see kind of your fellow scouts in the surrounding area just kind of laughing and splashing some of them egging you on encouraging you it's fine it's not that deep hop in Aiden and Jester. Jester, you are in the pool. You have made your full transition and you are preparing to kind of dive beneath the surface. Go ahead and give me another. You know what? In this case, we're going to do stamina and athletics for you to kind of take a deep enough breath before plunging into the surface below the water in search of your fallen companion. Aiden, what are your intentions? Uh, I got eight successes on ripping. Eight that. successes, right? Thank you. Yeah. Eight successes will do it. As you kind of rip it by the neck and yank it off, you can feel a, like a squelching and cracking noise as you kind of grasp onto it and rip it off. And before it's even off of your form, you can see its limp kind of appendages dangle in your grasp as it drops dead into your hands being removed successfully the other one gets zero successes as it tries to wrench at your fur but doesn't seem to be having any success to get <laughs> through jester um i got three successes three successes you take a deep breath and you plunge into the deep, going back down into that darkness that you had just previously escaped from. Uh, go ahead and give me a wits and investigation, but I'm going to have you take a negative one dice penalty because it is very hard to see underwater uh, with any kind of clarity. Even if you open your eyes, there's that glassy film that kind of covers them without any kind of eye protection. I got one die. One success. One success. Okay. So as you're kind of reaching, diving deep, you feel your hand grab something, make contact with something beneath the water, but you're not able to tell what it is. What would you like to do? Pull it to where I can see it. So you want to pull it up to the surface of the water or you want to pull it in close? Pull it in close. Okay. 
So as you grab onto it and you yank it, co coming closer, almost emerging out of the darkness, you do see Joseph as he kind of comes into form in his Hamid form, but you can tell that there are no air bubbles currently escaping from him. Whatever air was in his body has left him. All right. Going up. Okay. Next round. Aspen. You're atop the roof. You found the center point. You can hear Artie kind of growling and snapping, and you can hear these little jagglings like yelping as they're being kind of tossed and battered back in a way. She'll just, she'll look at the spot and just scream to Artie, I can't, I can't. Go ahead and give me a composure and resolve check as he looks at you and gives out the most bestial roar of intimidation ever. <laughs> With five successes, I'm going to call it persuasion more than intimidation, because he wouldn't be intending to scare you. He'd be intending to motivate you. So he kind of looks over in his large Krynos form and gives out like a roar that stirs to your very core. You feel your heart quicken. And what would have been terrifying instead just stresses the urgency, stresses the importance of this moment. And even though it's not something that you would do of your own free will, go ahead and make two rouse checks as you shift into Krynos form. I failed one of them. Okay. So your rage goes down to one, I believe, but you do manage to shift for the first time since into your Krynos form, the white fur kind of breaking out across your form, your muscles growing larger and thicker and almost like iron of your arms. You have found your jackhammer. Go ahead and make a strength and brawl with four additional dice as you go to smash the ceiling or the roof of the Amelie Arena. So I got a brutal... Brutal outcome? Okay, how many total successes? Total successes is five. Okay. Aiden and Jester, declare your intentions. Trying to get the last one off of me. So he, same thing, I'm going to reach for it. You do it. not need to spend your willpower this turn because you did successfully kill something in the last oh, round. Yay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to kill the other one then. Okay. Go ahead and make a strength and brawl. Jester, what's your intention? Uh, pulling Joseph to the surface, trying to find a place. Okay, go ahead and give me a strength in athletics. While you've got him kind of held still with one hand, you're going to use your feet and your arm to pull yourself up. Seven successes. Okay. Okay, or successes. Many things happen all at the same time. A splash and what feels like two earthquakes. The splash is Jester and Joseph breaking the surface of the water as they reach and grab Purchase, or as she grabs Purchase onto some ice and begins pulling her way up. The first rumble earthquake is the sound of the ceiling above giving way as a hole is punched thoroughly 
through the roof of the Amelie Arena, sending rocks shadow like just falling down all around, and the bright light of the moon streams in from up above, illuminating the arena below. The second explosion is more of a cracking and giving way as across the ice it shatters up and out and the hulking form of the starving remnant breaks the surface once again and this is where we're going to take our break we'll be back in about five ish minutes everyone so don't go far the story of this pack is Difficult to say the very least at this particular moment, but there is still hope for those who seek it. We'll be right back in just five minutes. See you soon. St. Petersburg by Night is brought to you through collaborations with our partnered vendors, Wolfpack Dice, Ember Fox Dice, Dragon Ink Dice, Bear of the Bard, Champs Tramps, Panchi Artista, and Chromatic Creations. Links to our partner vendors, as well as our Twitch and YouTube channels, can be found on our website, stpetebynight.com. The official theme song for St. Petersburg by Night is Vampire by Faith and Failure. You can find them at faithandfailure.com. You can follow SPBN on all socials with the hashtag St. Pete by Night. If you wish to support our program, you can do so at Kofi.com slash St. Pete by Night to help keep the stories rolling. We are back. Hope everybody had a good break. Our pack finds themselves in rather dire circumstances. The starving remnant that they have fought so valiantly against may have cost them one of the members of their pack indirectly. But some hope emerges as the roof breaks in and a hole allows a beam of light from the moon to shine into the surface down below. Players, as a reminder, ever since entering the Umbra, you have not howled at the moon yet, and doing so will give you one more rage to potentially be used going forward. As we begin, Joseph, I ask for another memory. You are still unconscious, and the light seems to be fading. I would like you to give me a memory of some place dark and what that means to Joseph if he embraces the darkness or if he is slightly terrified of it but something unknown something dark so um throughout the hills back home you'll often get um erosion and and outcroppings of rocks uh, and sometimes those will lead to caves uh, and so there's been plenty of times that he's ventured near them um, there is one time he and some friends were in the woods and they went deep 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 into one um, and he felt like he should keep going deeper and there were secrets in there he wanted to find and his friends were terrified um, the batteries went out on the flashlights, but he just kept going in. Um, and so he's remembering that moment of stepping past his friends and going deeper into the caverns. So as you journey and the light gives out and only the dark, cool abyss lays beyond that is the cave, you can hear the kind of fading, echoing voices of your friends calling to you from beyond, but it's kind of like two strings pulling from either side, one string being that of your curiosity, kind of urging you forward, but another string of 
some desperation, maybe some fear, maybe some worry about getting in trouble or getting caught or who knows, the unknown happening because of this circumstance also kind of pulling you back. So you can kind of feel something pulling at your chest, but you also feel something pulling at your back. As Jester, you emerge from the water, pulling Joseph up onto the surface of the cool ice. Aspen, you've broken through. You can see some hundred or so feet below the ice of the surface of the rink down below, but now it seems almost like something out of a, a documentary about Antarctica, as there are several floating chunks of ice kind of in this pool of water. Aiden, you managed to successfully grab the other jaggling and rip it off of you. You can feel it kind of crunch beneath your grasp as you throw its lifeless body to the side. There are the two of you, Jester and Aiden. There's Aspen up above and Joseph unconscious on the surface of the ice. And then there is the remnant, which still radiating fury, radiating just hatred and decay stands at the opposite end of the rink. As the jagglings, more jagglings kind of come in from the stands and prepare to kind of start climbing the boards, the light that comes from the entryway starts to almost kind of like flicker and flash as things are kind of crossing the surface of the light as what seems like hundreds of spiders kind of come emerging out of the entryways and scrambling down the kind of various bleachers and benches down to the surface of the ice. But they don't seem intent on you. They seem intent on the jagglings as they start to swarm and crawl up the jagglings and one large gigantic spider kind of enters into the entryway as Regina kind of starts walking her way out of the entryway tunnel with all of these spiders kind of coming in from all sides, swarming over the rink. As the jagglings are overcome by the various spiders, several spiders leap out onto the surface of the ice and start stitching the ice back together, rampantly trying to provide some stability to the ice's surface, trying to patch the various pieces back together, but going nowhere near the remnant as it just kind of snarls and looks its way around at all of these kind of spiritual figures coming in from all sides. Players, what are your intentions? Aiden, we'll start with you. Has uh, Aiden noticed that there's some form of light coming from the roof since he killed the last jaggling? Go ahead and give me a wits and awareness. Yes. As you kind of look to the source of the first rumbling, the first cave-in of the roof up above, you can see the bathe of the glow of the light of the moon washing over you. Yeah, he'll give off um, a wolfish grin when it's done his crinos form and let out a large howl. Okay. You howl at the moon, you may regain one rage. Nice. Aspen, you're staring down to below. You can see this kind of scene unfolding in behind you. Or in front of you, I should say, down below. And then you find that across from the hole, you can see Artie has arrived and has kind of crouched down on his crinos form. He looks to you kind of with the same intent look and then just leaps into the hole, comes careening down towards the ice with claws and fangs outstretched as he goes dive-bombing towards the starving remnant. Yeah, she's just gonna back up, 
get a running start and just jump down and okay. hoping to get into the water. All right. So go ahead and give me a strength and athletics. Remember, you have the four additional dice from being in Krynos form. Jester. He's not breathing. He's not breathing. Okay. As I'm, I'm going to pull myself out of the uh, water and climb on the ice with him. Hopefully with a bunch of spiders around, like Absolutely. fixing the ice around us. Yes. <laughs> um, as soon as you're out of the water, you can see them setting to work, repairing the ice behind you. I will look up because she'll be like, Artie, Aspen, I, and then see the, them coming down in Carter's form being like, oh, they can't help. And then I looked at the spiders. Can you stabilize him? Go ahead and give me a charisma and persuasion check. Actually, you know what? I want it to be charisma and leadership. They are not creatures of their own thought to be persuaded. They are simply automatons at this point. Okay. Three successes. Three successes. So as you kind of look to the spiders, asking for their aid, three of them that are kind of busy stop or stitching the water just kind of stop, look up, look over at Joseph, and kind of immediately start skittering and leap off of the ice onto the kind of same icy platform you're standing on and immediately start making their way over to Joseph. One of them kind of crawls up on his chest, another one starts moving around and kind of stitching the various wounds on his form, kind of moving over and almost reconstructing his flesh around the gaping, gaping wounds. And the third climbs in his mouth and goes into his mouth. Any other intention? I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to heal. Okay. Actually, sorry. No, I will look up at the moon and I will howl. Okay. So letting out a howl towards the moon that now shines through the gaping hole in the ceiling, you may take a point of rage. Okay. Now I'm going to try to attempt to heal one of these aggro aggravated okay. damages. All right. One fail and oh wait, I'm in no, I'm in Glabro. Um, I made one. Okay, so you managed to shift into the hulking form. Uh, you are back down to one rage again because of the failure, but uh, you are now back in Krynos form. No, Aiden. I'm not switching. To, I'm oh, not, not switching. Not, oh, you're, I was you're, healing. You're healing, right? Okay, yeah. so you do lose one at uh, one rage, but you do heal one aggravated. Yes. Okay. Got it. Ada. All right. Okay. Uh, you're going to do the uh, lacerating wind to the remnant. Okay. So go ahead and explain what that is and what the role required is. Uh, so Aiden's going to take his large crinos hand, like basically draw it back, and he's going to rake the wind itself pushing it towards a uh, either a group or a single target. In this fact, he's going to focus it on the remnant. Uh, on a success, it would give the uh, target a minus two to any of their attack rolls. Okay. And what is the uh, role you have to make? I have to do a resolve plus my honor. And, and is they there a are... resisting? Yes. Yeah, so it's a stamina uh, survival or a dexterity and their athletics. Either one. Okay. Uh, 
is five successes. Oh, I have to do a rage check. I'm good on my rage. Okay. It only got four successes. So as you lash out to the wind, newly kind of invigorated by the extra rage granted to you by Luna, you carve the air, sending large kind of streams and gusts of almost razor-sharp air in the direction of the remnant. The remnant kind of roars as the air approaches, but as it hits, it kind of recoils slightly and in a disgusted form, kind of like twitches a little bit before it starts to move forward. Aspen, with your strength and athletics, you leap off of the roof and you can see the ice coming closer, but because of your precision and this strength granted to you by the Krynos form, you manage to hit the water near the ice, plunging into it before emerging back up grasping hold of the icy kind of platform that is slowly growing larger as these spiders seem to stitch the ice back together. Artie also kind of comes falling in, but he wasn't aiming for the water. He was aiming for the remnant. And he... crashes into the remnant with his claws out, kind of tackling it by the midsection and driving it into the ice. While the ice starts to crack beyond the force of him hitting it like a battering ram, it does not give way as the spiders are on standby, already stitching the ice back together where the cracks kind of spider outwards from the impact. Immediately, they begin start exchanging blows of fury of claws and teeth snapping at each other as we go into the next round. Those in Krynos expend a point of willpower to maintain the form. Aiden, you do not have to spend one in the last round because you had killed the Jagling, so this is for the new round. and declare your intentions. We'll go with Aiden, then Aspen, then Jester. Uh, Aiden's going to run forward, doing a uh, another raging strike towards the remnant. I will do my rage check. Good. Okay. And then make a strength and brawl. Aspen, what's your intention as you climb out of the water onto the ice's surface? I think she's actually going to go for the remnant as well, and she is going to try and claw it. Okay, so go ahead and give me a strength and brawl as you leap across the ice towards the danger that you just moments before were trying to get as far away from and avoid. Now you are actively engaging. Jester, what are your intentions? Currently, I am watching to uh watching the spiders to see if they will get joseph up i am on standby by if like they're not that i'm going to attempt to try cpr though she's never done it before no training so this is going to be fun okay joseph give me another memory this time of feeling sick like sick to your stomach like about to expel sick Uh, that would be, um, let's say it was a Christmas where he ate too much and he ended up spending, uh, for early in the morning, ended up spending the entire day in bed, not able to play with his toys, um, with his grandmother forcing him to drink some god-awful tea to try to keep it down and it still didn't help. Okay. So as you drink the kind of gross and herbal concoction it doesn't take long for it to roil around in your stomach and start to find its way towards the surface ready to be expelled go ahead and make two rage checks for me joseph sputters 
as water just kind of spurts out of his mouth, just splattering out, almost in like a geyser-esque fashion, expelling what appears to be a large spider out of his mouth, too, that kind of plops out onto his chest as, Joseph, you heal one aggravated damage and are restored to consciousness. I have lost the wolf. Okay. But the moon is shining in above. Can I, then I, um, probably next round after I recover, next I will round howl. you can howl at yeah. the moon. Yes. Okay. okay. When I see that he's awake, I'm going to spend this round shifting into, uh, his bow. Okay. So go ahead and make the, uh, the, the rage check. Good. Okay. So again, you find yourself shifting. You've made a lot of shifts today and in rather rapid succession. So you can feel it kind of starting to grow a little bit painful as you do so. Go ahead and take a superficial point of damage just because you've made so many shifts within a course of minutes, it seems. Aiden, how many successes did you get? Six. Okay. Aspen. Five. The remnant is going to attempt to do his raging strike and hitting multiple opponents, but he is at a disadvantage because of that wind. Okay. So both of you make contact along with Artie, just finding purchase as you're claws rake into the side of it and you can feel it digging into this kind of seemingly almost grotesque dried but also decaying flesh pulling chunks out with each time the claws rake upon it and it seems to be letting out this kind of like devastating but pained howl as all three of you manage to hit your target spreading the damage out and avoiding any damage it would do to you in response next round Aiden, Aspen, Jester, Joseph, declare your intentions. I'm going to go for to grapple to try and restrain the arms by holding them back. Okay, give me a strength and brawl. Aspen. She's just going to try and rend it with her claws again. Okay, strength and brawl. Jester. I'm going to charge okay. to the remnant and dart in between Aiden and Aspen for a good bite. Okay. So give me a strength and brawl, but if you do succeed, you will do an aggravated damage because of your bite. And Joseph. Uh, first is the howl. Is that take an action or just... No. I could, okay, cool. I'm gonna howl, but I do have Moon Quicken, which lets me heal a point of superficial willpower, which I need. Um... And then I'm going to scramble back and try to drag the um, the big shard with me away from the ice. Okay, give me a strength in athletics as you try to pull the shard across the ice. You are currently in your glabro form? I'd be Hamid, because I just woke up. Okay, yeah. yeah. However, I'm no longer impaired. That's true. Three successes. Okay, so now that the ice is a little more firm and stable, you grab onto the shard and start dragging it across the ice. It's heavy in your grasp, but as you pull it, it kind of scrapes across the ice behind you, and you can see the spiders behind the various scrapes stitching the ice back together in an almost pattern-like formation, just leaping back and forth over, leaving these strands behind them, kind of almost like stitches across the ice. Okay, Aiden, what was your successes? I got 10. 10 successes. Aspen? 6. Jester? 4. Okay. Aiden, kind of swooping in behind after having gotten to the midsection of it, 
wraps his arms in an almost vine-like fashion around the the large kind of long limbs of this remnant, pinning them back behind his back as Jester comes in for a keen bite to the leg, kind of ripping off some more of this decaying, disgusting flesh. Artie rakes his claws down the midsection of the torso, causing it to kind of splinter open and break open as Aspen, with a final slash across, rakes across the throat of the remnant, and it almost immediately starts to break apart in Aiden's grasp, its form kind of shriveling and breaking into pieces as the various limbs of the beast kind of give way and decay and deteriorate. And with that, combat comes to a close as you defeat the remnant. You now find yourself on the ice, on the surface, the body kind of deteriorating except for the talisman that slowly decays off the neck and drops to the ice. Joseph, as you reach the side next to you, the pulsating light within the spire fades and the spire crumbles away to dust in your hands until there is nothing left. But the talisman starts to glow as the same pulsing light enters the talisman. The scene is yours. Aiden will get out of his cranos form. He's beat up. I was one away from being completely full. Uh, he's going to yell out to Joseph, like, I need I need your strings. I'm as he's like gesturing to his multiple wounds. I don't have any strings. Uh you did the, the thing with the sharp thing. Oh, I don't have them here. Oh, that's inconvenient. They don't cross with us. Uh, I need them too. Uh, we need to get home. Grab the the, the necklace. Ar- Artie kind of shifts out of his Kranos form as well, and you can see that he too appears to be bleeding from multiple what appears to be scratches on his face and arms. Uh, he does not have dedicated clothing, so he is naked completely but seems to not mind, despite the various gouges along his torso. And he kind of looks over towards Aspen with kind of like a a coy smile of sorts as he just kind of nods his head. She shifts back into Hamid as well. And, um, sheepishly smiles and uh, picks up the talisman, unless Aiden already has it. Hey, he was going to... Yeah, he had it, but he'll hand it to you. I don't know what to do with it. She'll just grab it, and she'll kind of go over to um, Joseph and kind of push it to his chest. Are you okay? I I probably will be. Ow. Uh, He'll look up at Jester. Uh, Thank you. I think that was you. Jester will give a whine um, as I am still in hispo form and just kind of lay down on the ice. My ma- my fur is covered, like matted in blood that has ice crystals on it. Can, you know, can we go? Oh, uh, Aspen. I know I'm all nasty, but he'll go in and give her a big hug. A, a light squeeze, not trying to break her, but pick her up and like you did it you did the thing yeah yeah i did the thing (laughs) how do you feel it's good right it's it's, i have feelings yeah it's good no but what you but what you did that that was that was very helpful thank you yeah i'm just glad i could do something (laughs) well it helped a lot and she looks over to to Artie and just goes thank you I knew you could do it. It's not always bad. 
can we can we get the fuck out of here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is that it? Artie says as he kind of gestures to Joseph and the talisman. I I think so. Um, the the light moved. I think this will be what she needs. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we have to get out where we came in, right? Technically, um. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead the way. Uh, it'll be easier to get out where we came in. I mean, I don't think a bunch of hockey fans want some naked werewolves popping up in the middle of their game, so I don't know if that's a thing, but... No. no let's go back. Okay. Um, and Regina kind of chitters a little bit. The quickest way to travel in the Umbra is by thought. Now, if you have any thoughts left in your head after getting knocked around, drowned, falling from hundreds of feet up above like a maniac, maybe think of where you came in. And as you do so, you're there. Seemingly transported from the cold recesses of the icy surface of the Amelie Arena to the lake. And as you find yourself in the bedrock of the lake down below, your feet are wet. As there are puddles that seem to have formed beneath you. But puddles that didn't come because of you. Not because of the ice melting off of your forms, but instead as if they were already there. Just covering just the tops of your feet. Or the feet, your feet. The cool water kind of embracing your skin in an almost cooling, not mechanically, but healing feel. Off from the bank on the other side of the lake, you hear, you did it, hooray! As you see, Star is still kind of juggling the moonstone on the other side. I will paw at the water happily and give a, a bark at Star. I'm glad you guys didn't die. I'm gonna look over towards Joseph. Hmm. Just mostly. Wait, hang on. And Star kind of looks up towards the sky. Uh huh. Ah. Okay. She says you have to leave now. That was our plan. Thank you for the help. Well, don't be gone yes. too long. Be nice to see you again. Absolutely. I'll definitely um, try to get in contact with you another time. Okay. And with All that, right. she kind of just like climbs up the limb of the tree. And as she kind of leaps off one of the tall limbs, she actually takes flight, becoming just that mode of light kind of spiraling its way upwards towards the moon once again. Hi. So, um, is this the whole howling, dancing bit again, Hardy asks? Uh, I can't, I can't burn the herbs again. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do the ritual again. Okay. But when there's no water at this spot, but when we go back, that water is going to be there, right? Uh, that's a good point. Let's go to the edge. Uh, just a thought. Yeah. So as you make your way to the edge of the lake and kind of climb up the bedrock to the surface, you find yourself sitting beside the observation tower once more the very strands of the weaver and the spiders kind of still holding it in place and you begin you're right now joseph as a reminder since it's been a few weeks can you describe this right again uh yeah so this is the right of shadow passage um i it, i do a uh, right test using a cult and any of my highest of my renown i also add a rage for every participant, all of us put a little rage into it. Um, Joseph's version of this is 
not a yelly, screamy one. Um, normally, to get in, it is burning of specific herbs um, and a little bit of singing. Uh, so he'll start singing again the same song, um, more somber and quiet. A nice perk that Joseph has is that he has um, the occult traveler lore sheet. So this actually one uh, normally to get out is two. Um, it's uh, it's two dice easier, two results easier. Uh, Difficulty is reduced by two, but I I reduce it by additional one just in case it's really hard to get out. So um, I'll be making that roll with what four extra rage added to it. That is four successes. Four successes. All of you find yourselves shifting once again. Not changing forms, but shifting realities. As you all take that step and find yourselves standing upon the wooden platform of the observation tower. You don't see the moon as it's a cloudy night. and From what you can tell, the railings and the boards beneath your feet are damp having been hit by what seems to be a blustering storm that kind of is cascading off into the distance. Everyone make me a wits and awareness test. Aspen and Jester, you're just happy to be home, but Joseph and Aiden, at first you might not notice, but then you recognize something has changed about your surroundings. Maybe it's the currently off Christmas lights that enshrine the railings of the observation tower. Maybe it's the slight chill and the gusts of wind in the air, but... This was not how you left it. Time has passed, and not just a little time, a significant amount of time. As you are now in the year 2024, though you won't quite grasp that until you're back in town. But you are home, back in the material plane and everything is as it was. The water of the lake is full, the trees, once brittle and broken within the umbra, seem lush and full of foliage, as you remember it. Artie kind of looks around for a moment. So now what? We take this to to our friend. Maybe we Maybe rest heal first? first. Yeah. 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 Okay. Which friend? This is for her. It, it's definitely for her. Just asking. Felt like it was a formality. I think everyone had their minds made up when we found it. But are we friends with the other one? No, no not at all. Associated no. with, uh, uh, what's that word uh, you uh, that you say, Aspen? Um, assholes. We don't associate with those. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm glad yeah. you you've picked up on that. That's a good one to have. I in your hear back you pocket. say it on on the phone a lot. <sighs> Already kind I'll, of. I'll shift back to uh, human. Okay. After since it's been like a while before I've shifted between things. Definitely not friends. I don't like the guy either. But he's still Guru. And until he's... adding to the problem more than he already has, 
We should at least keep that in mind. Maybe he can help us, but that's going to be some demons for him to battle first. Just, just keep it in mind. That's all I'm saying. Not all Guru, in my experience, see the same things. I mean, according to the nation, Eliza's nothing. A traitor. A turncoat. So... The guy's an asshole. I agree. And I'm not saying we should give him the thing. I'm just saying don't write him off just yet. Maybe there's something worth redeeming in there. He still wants the same thing we want, even if his methods aren't the best. But that's, that's a conversation after much not this. And he kind of starts making his way down the walkway out of the park. Artie, wait. Yeah. I need everyone's help. I don't. My friends need help, and I don't know how to help them. Which, which friends? The people I had asked to look into the power plant. They're friends of mine. We're part of a group. We're an environmentalist group. Um, and they did look in, and it looks like some of the people we've been working against use that against us and are blaming my friends and I for the explosion. Whatever I can do. I don't know what that yeah. is yet. This isn't as simple as, like, you know, taking a record off an arrest thing or, uh, you know, giving someone a new ID, but we'll figure out a way. I mean, we okay. just fought a fucking demon from the other side, for God's sake. I think getting someone out of jail can't be that hard, right? It feels... astronomically harder for me. But you're not doing it alone. Thanks. Yeah, I think we're much better when we're together. Yeah. That's why we're packed. I mean, hell yes. Did you see Aspen with that last blow? Very proud. I feel like you all are looking at me and I'm not really into that. So let's go home. <laughs> yeah. And with that, you make your way down the pathways through Lettuce Lake Park, where you find Regina restored to her Jeep form, sitting in the same place that she was left. Artie kind of climbs into the driver's seat as you all get into the car. And he touches the dashboard. And instead of his usual murmurings, he just says, I owe you one. And with that, the Jeep comes to life. And it rolls its way out of Lettuce Lake Park, back onto the streets that, well familiar, since you've all traversed these streets a few times, something seems different. Because now you've seen what the other side sees of these streets. What these streets, these buildings, this world is doing to Gaia firsthand. And that the fight against it, while long, while in the minds of some seemingly endless or hopeless, is necessary. And with that, we will bring this session to a close. Thank you so much to everybody who watched along with us tonight. Thank you to these amazing, amazing players. Go check them out on social media, which you'll see in the credits. And uh, keep tuned 
to rage across Tampa. This is only a small section of the story. While they've successfully survived their first encounter with the Umbra, the Umbra is a very important part of Guru culture and is a very important tool, but also a very important detriment when it comes to the challenges that Guru face. So this is not the last time they will most likely have to encounter the Umbra. And what horrors await? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Thank you so much for watching. Go follow us on St. Pete by Night on all social media. Uh, like I said, go follow these amazing players. and Go support our vendors. We have an amazing list of sponsored vendors who make this show possible, who support us every step of the way. Uh, this week, we have an episode of Don't Get Caught coming up on Thursday. Then a very, very special After Dark episode on Saturday where I will be discussing the lore of St. Pete, starting with how the whole game came to be, what inspired me to set everything in St. Petersburg and Tampa, and some of the origins of the world of darkness St. Pete from before and during the Exodus. So go check that out. And if you're a member of the server, submit your questions now, as there will also be an AMA portion of that particular stream where I will answer everything that isn't currently potentially relevant uh, to the overall story. So go submit those questions. Uh, and thank you for watching. Next week, we will be back for an episode, but the week after, we will be off as it is our big Kindred Con celebration. But stay tuned to the schedule for all of the updates as to the programming that is coming through. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a wonderful evening, everyone. This has been a St. Petersburg by Night production. Rage Across Tampa is produced in agreement with the World of Darkness and Dark Pack. The storyteller for Rage Across Tampa is Kent. Tonight's characters were voiced by Preston, Champagne, Nori, and Simon. Visit our website at stpetebynight.com for more information about all of our productions and how you can become part of our community. Thank you for listening. Until next time, fangs, stakes, and claws out.